and most floppy disks were very similar in their operation. You would have some kind of disk, <coughs> you'd have some kind of disk hub, which is used so that a mechanical arm could slot in there and actually spin it at high speeds. The three and a half inch discs introduced a protective shutter, so you didn't need to use an extra sleeve to carry the disc around in. So the shutter provides protection for the disc surface itself. The three and a half inch discs also introduced a hard plastic housing. So although they're called floppy discs, so discs, the cases are quite firm and hard. Inside of that, there was a polyester sheet, so it's just a sheet of some fabric that allows the disc to rotate rapidly without damaging itself or scratching. And the disc itself is coated in magnetic particles, and the whole readable area is broken up into a number of tracks and sectors. You can see a red area indicating one data sector. What's worth noting in most floppy disk formats is that the sectors are arranged so that it's the same angle of rotation for every sector. So it's the same angle of rotation. So this sector here in the centre of the disc actually has a much smaller area than this sector here at the outside edge, but they each contain the same amount of data. And that was simply because it was easier to develop the mechanical devices that could read and write mechanical and circuitry to read and write the data by turning the disk at a constant speed. So it's actually because of the distribution of magnetic particles it would be possible to actually put more data on the outside edge because there's more area to use. But that would involve having to be able to reduce the speed at which the disk turns the further out from the centre the data is. And that was a little bit complicated for earlier floppy disks to do now. That sort of technology is very easily available now and is used in other media, such as hard disks. With hard disks, the data is stored on a hard non-magnetic platter. So we've got a platter of some non-magnetic material that's covered in magnetic particles. The read heads, platters and the control circuitry are all contained inside a single sealed device. So normally these devices, hard disks, are sealed, completely sealed, so you can't get in and you can't actually see what's inside, but this one's happily been opened up for us to see. Here this is the disk head, this tiny device here, just floating just a minuscule distance above the surface. It's not touching the surface, it's just above it. And so we can have a read or write head, and there's two key ways in which you can do this. Uh, longitudinal or perpendicular, but either of these, what it's essentially doing is making the magnetic particles line up one way or the other way. And depending whether they're lined up one way or the other, that indicates whether it represents a zero or a one. Longitudinal recording, the bits are aligned along the surface, so the flow of the magnetic field is along the surface. Perpendicular recording aligns the direction of the magnetic charge vertically, which actually allows more data to be packed into a smaller area, so it's a more recent innovation and allows more data to be packed more tightly. It does require a stronger charge, stronger current. Here's a close up of the disc head, the read right head, and it really is hard to appreciate just how tiny the distance is from the, the point to the surface. The platters themselves are coated with a thin layer of magnetic material and we are talking about around about 15 nanometers of material. Typical rotation speed is about 7200 rotations per minute or revolutions per minute and the heads float just nanometers above the surface. So we're talking about particles of smoke wouldn't be able to fit through the gap. So the modern discs are sealed out and completely airtight. Earlier hard discs were quite different, so if we go way back to the 1970s, hard discs had removable disc packs of the platters and the drives would be these giant devices about the size of a washing machine. 
you could put in one pack of discs into it, whereas the head would be in the in the drive, which would be a separate device. There's a number of issues that relate to hard disks in terms of the performance that can be achieved from them. Most hard drives, hard disk drives, will switch off automatically to save power, which means that when you start to use a hard disk after a period of not using one, it takes a little bit of time to start up, so some spin up time. And data can be distributed across the disk in a wide range of locations. So when you go to read or write some values, the hard disk head may have to move about. So it might be in the centre of the disk and it might have to move out to the edge. So there's some kind of seek time. And latency again, because the disk may have to rotate until you reach the correct point on the surface of the disk. And then there's fragmentation, which is that single files can actually be stored in different locations scattered over the surface of a disk. So that might add additional time as the disk head has to move, as the drive head has to move between different sections and positions. However, there's a range of different things that people have done to improve speed and technology. And so the revolutions per minute for server disks can be well over 10,000 RPM. Notebook disks to save power are typically slower. Um, and when you measure all the different delays together, that's often referred to as the average access time. Sometimes also referred to as latency, which can be confusing. And the speed is usually measured in terms of burst speed and transfer rate. So burst speed is what's the maximum speed you can get. When the disk head is over the data and it's reading the data you actually want, what's the maximum speed you're going to be able to get from a particular hard disk? And you've taken out the seek time type errors and delays. So some typical disk drive stats that are current. Capacity for a hard drive is anywhere from 500 gigabytes to 2 terabytes. It can actually be larger or obviously smaller. Those are quite typical for current devices. Spin up time could take several seconds. Seek time, 5 to 10 milliseconds. Average access time and late, late Latency, 3 to 6 milliseconds. Data transfer rate, round about anywhere from 250 to 350 megabytes per second. Higher performance disks are available at a cost. And then there is tape. Now, you often you only really see tape drives in 70s films. So in a Bond film <coughs> or some other film where there's a government research station, you may find rooms full of computing devices and these sort of taped machines at the back of a room, just going forwards and backwards as they read and write to a particular tape. Tape gives you a sort of sequential data store. It's very slow for random access because it's very slow to move from one point on a tape to somewhere at the other end of the tape. It takes a long time. But they can have very high speed when it comes to actually saving or restoring data in order. So as long as you don't have to move from one position to another, as long as you're able to just keep saving to the tape, turning it, turning it as you go, so you're doing everything in order, you can actually have very high speeds for saving or restoring data that's been stored in, in sequence. And tape is still used for data archiving. So although it might seem outdated and we don't see it very often um, in the systems we use here at university, and you don't tend to see it very often in computer shops or in magazines, it is still used for servers and for internet service providers and for the other people who've got huge volumes of data to store, tape is still used because it's very cheap. And capacities allow you to have, for example, tape cartridges where one cartridge can store up to about five terabytes. And that's quite current today. So one tape cartridge will store more than a hard disk, but will be cheaper than a comparable hard disk.